Good morning, Olaf here. These are my thoughts about Orbea's approach on low-powered motors versus specialized. I did a review a few weeks ago of the specialized Levo or Turbo Levo SL with its low-powered 35 Newton meter motor. And in that video, I said that these types of bikes definitely has a place in the market and that other bike manufacturers will probably follow and we will probably see more competitors uh, go this way uh, with lighter weight bikes and smaller motors uh, that feels more like an analog bike. And lo and behold, just a few weeks later, Orbea releases their Orbea Rise. And that bike weighs in at 16.5 kilos. Some say it weighs 16.2. The website says 16.5, so I stick with that. And uh, that's a remarkable figure for an e-mountain bike. But uh, what's even more remarkable is that they achieved this weight by using a standard full power e-mountain bike motor, the Shimano EP8 motor. The only difference between the standard EP8 motor and uh, Obea's EP8 RS motor is that little RS sticker and a uh, new firmware. If we look at the weight, the EP RS motor weighs in at 2.6 kilos and the SL1.1 motor weighs in at uh, under 2 kilos. The battery packs are roughly the same. Orbea's battery pack is at 360 watt hours and the uh, specialized battery pack is at 320 watt hours. But well, I guess it's that they weigh about the same anyway. Now the weight is one thing, but I think the real important difference here is the power, the torque and the power of these two motors. The EP8 RS produces 60 Newton meters and probably, I don't know that, but it's probably 250 watts of uh, continuous power while the specialized motor produces 35 newton meters with 240 watts continuous power. So what Orbea did was to detune the EP8 motor from 85 newton meters down to 16 newton meters and uh, they also claim that they have changed the characteristics of that motor to make the bike feel more natural. But I think the real reason for why Orbea detuned this motor to 60 newton meters is because of range. Everyone who has ridden an e-mountain bike in turbo or boost mode knows how quickly the battery drains in those modes. So by lowering the, the torque and the power output, you can get away with a smaller battery and have a greater range. And that is why Orbea can claim a four hour range while Specialized claim a five hour range on their motor system. How you can measure range in hours I don't know, but apparently that's possible. One important difference is the different voltage that the motors use. Specialized has, together with the German manufacturer Male, produced a motor that uses a 48 volt system, as opposed to uh, the Shimano EP8 motor that still uses the 36 volt system. And that can make a difference for a couple of reasons. First of all, by having less current in the system, you can have a smaller motor, which essentially makes it lighter. The electrical windings in the motor can be made smaller. And also the thermal loss uh, is also affected by having a lower current. So in that sense, Specialized has made a more modern motor, which can get away with a smaller battery and, have, uh, and also to uh, be able to produce a smaller motor in itself. So the specialized motor is more dedicated to this purpose, I think. And if we take a look at that EP8 RS motor, I would personally be a bit annoyed to ride that bike knowing that I could have 85 Newton meters and I would rather choose myself if I want to drain the battery and not let that decision to the motor management system. And now Obia claims that this EP8 RS motor it yeah, feels more natural, um, but I think actually after having testing the standard E8 motor on a Merida E160, 
I think that motor is is natural enough actually. But at the same time, I haven't tested the EP8 RS motor, so maybe Orbea has a valid point there. Now my last point is price. And I think one big advantage by using a standard motor, the Shimano EP8 motor, as opposed to building your own motor, is price actually. Because a motor that's built in volumes is likely to be cheaper than a, than a dedicated motor that's built only for one brand. Both Urbia Rise and the Specialized Turbo Levo SL are both very expensive bikes. So perhaps there it doesn't matter as much. But if we take a quick look into the future, maybe there will be more budget-friendly bikes, uh, lightweight, low-powered, budget-friendly bikes. And uh, there I think it makes a difference. So what do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, until then, peace out.